On this episode, we're gonna talk about rear disc brake conversion kit for first gen Tacoma. So I wanna go over the details of installing our first gen Tacoma rear disc brake kit, which actually fits Tacoma pickup rear ends from 78, 79, whenever that first year was, all the way to 2003, so the end of first generation. Different widths of those axles, but as far as the brakes are concerned, they're all the same. The, the mounting offset between this here um, on the axle to where the disc brake mounts on the hub, it's all the same, so you can use this. So for instance, on this truck, we have put a pre-Tacoma rear end in, uh, like an 88, 87 rear end because it's narrower. So it helps suck the tires in on a stock Tacoma. So this one, we use the one we use for R&D, so it's already kind of halfway tore apart. We'll go through the details, but what I'll do is I can walk out here and show you the stock rear end out of this and just kind of point to some stuff. And then we have some how-to on, on steps and photos that we can show the details. Let's walk out there and check out that rear end. All right, now we're out here where I dumped off the back half for this Tacoma with the original rear end. But I can go over a couple things. This is like a factory proportioning load level apparatus that the factory use, we can get rid of that. So that's not to be used. We use line in, that comes from the front, which technically is here. So you can take one of these lines, figure out like, don't have an exact bracket in the kit on how to hold this, but we just need to hold the top of this. You can still use this whole thing and then just not hook it up. As far as like don't use this proportioning side of it, we just need to go from the front of the vehicle into straight into this line. And then that comes down to this factory T. And then our kit will use, you can use these factory lines and then we just have an adapter for this bracket here, you'll see. Let me run around to the back side. Maybe that'll help show. And so we have a bracket that hooks on here, uh, wherever it may be. And then there's a soft line that goes from the caliper to the hard line and then goes over here to the T right there. So that all stays the same, get rid of this. Plumbing wise, it's pretty straightforward. As far as what you gotta do is we gotta get this backing plate off. So you end up pulling the drum off, pulling the axle, pulling these out. You gotta press these out here and then pull the axle out and be able to pull the backing plate off and then put the axle back in. And what you'll wanna do is only use these front two factory studs to hold the axle. The rear two will get replaced with bolts from the kit that'll then bolt the caliper bracket out here on the back of the axle to hold the caliper and then the rotor so it's pretty straightforward like i said this rear end or pre tacoma rear ends will work so we'll hop back inside and install it on the new axle so before we get into the install and the brake kit i thought i'd just go over all the components and what it includes so rotors calipers from Wood the brake pads, and then when we get into all the details of the hardware, we have all the bolts and stuff to adapt from the rear axle onto the caliper, and kind of the whole engineering, the best part about here to get this to work out is this bracket that we machine build aluminum to get the offset and everything right. So, That'll adapt from the rear axle for bolt flange to the caliper. Soft line to go from the caliper to the housing. And then another important part is our AN hardware that we use for the caliper bolts. And they're calculated to have the right grip length and everything with the bracket and the caliper. So, and it's castellated nut. And then also we do an adapter to go from inverted flare 
to the AN soft line. And so the only thing you really have to do is we do also give you inverted flare nut because the factory flare nut is metric. So you're gonna have to cut off the flare on the hard line for the rear axle and put this and reflare it. And that'll get it to a standard. And then we have these brackets that'll bolt on to a factory bolt on the rear end housing. And it takes this adapter fitting into it like that with a clip. So it's uh, not a whole lot of modification or uh, extra work needed on the rear axle. You can strip all the other stuff off like we talked about earlier. And then also we have these concentric rings and basically all these do is go inside here and hold the rotor concentric on the hub because it's they're not hub centric. So this gets it somewhat centered so that until you get the lug bolts on or the lug nuts on the bolts to put the wheels on it, it holds the rotor from being way off. So just a little bit of ease there. So that's kind of the entire kit. There's a set of instructions that come with it. It's pretty easy install, but we'll go through that now and uh, show you all the little details. Got the caliper adapter, flange nuts, longer bolts, then factory. So, Tighten those up. And then I'm going to put the rotor on here just so I can show you on how the caliper goes on and have something to demonstrate. Here we have the caliper, and it's going to sit in here like this. Okay, so then we have this AN hardware and what's, uh, what's important to note is there's a thick washer and a thin washer. The thin washers are used mainly to, to space your caliper to get it centered on the rotor. The thick washer, there's several of them, but you'll need a combination. So what you want to do is, depending on how everything lines up, there's a variability here, so we have to have adjustability. So you'll want to have a washer here. It's most likely set up for one thin washer here on the inside. And then you might have to adjust this here and keep it away from the rotor. And then, so you're gonna have to go back and forth and kind of test fit, because they all fit slightly different depending on how the axle, because those, those thin shims are only 20 thousandths, 30 thousandths, so it's not that much. So that would end up going in like this bolt that on there and then there's a castellated nut that goes there let me get the other other one so we can have both of them on there that would probably help we're getting ready to tear this down for paint so this isn't going to be the final install on this one both of those in there then you put the castellated nut and there's a cotter pin that you got to stick on at the very end but don't don't do that till the very end that's gonna stay in there like that. So that's how that's gonna bolt on, okay? And then we're gonna have to shim this and figure out exactly how it fits. But for now, I'm just kind of going over. So then, now we wanna work on the, the brake line side of it. So what you'll need is this adapter fitting, which is eighth inch NPT. We'll go in here in the back of the caliper. Tighten that up, and then we have, so there's a 90 degree and straight. And so how this is designed is the straight goes here on the caliper. And this is a little different because we cut the bracket off that was here, but on your stock one, let me get everything here. On a stock one, you're going to have a stock line comes over. 
you'll take this inverted flare, cut the flare off, put this one on to create standard threads. And then there'll be a little bracket here. That bracket, this will bolt onto that stock. This will go through the bracket and the clip to hold it on like so. That'll bolt on there. And then this line here, I'm going to bolt it on here. We'll go like this. So it would look like something like this, just like that. So that will give you the flexible line to be able to take your caliper off and change pads, do maintenance, do whatever, and not have to break everything loose and lose that. So, but on this one, what we ended up doing, because like I said, this was all junk. So instead of having to use all this, we ended up just putting a bulkhead fitting, welding a little tab on here. And then a bulkhead fitting. That's AN on both sides. Same thing. I mean, essentially the same thing, it's just how it attaches to the axle. The way we did it, you wouldn't have to weld the axle, this one we did. So then that would set up like that. The one thing I forgot to mention on the final install is we have this concentric ring and that just goes on the axle before you put the rotor on and keeps it kind of helps, keeps it centered to give it a little bit more of, of like hub centric. Here shows the concentric ring so you can see a little bit of the concentric ring so you can see where the rotor would be way out here and be able to slop around so this concentric ring just goes on the hub and then the rotor goes on and then that holds it in tight so it's not flopping all around. You can go over here and look at the other side but basically we have the brake line back. I'll show you what we did here for brake lines, get those installed and that's all there is to it. If you have factory lines, then you don't have to do this next step, but we pre-made lines and did all that in this bulkhead, but you'll be able to use the factory T and soft line up to the factory frame and all that. So we'll do that real quick and then you'll see the finished product. Pretty easy. Got our lines that we had just made up for the rear end. Got my other bulkhead here, put it on. And we have the T bulkhead, go down here. And so then this line will go here. So we elected, and what I like to use is AN fittings, single flare. 37 degrees, double flare works fine. I have better luck with single flare, looks nicer and just easier to work with. We're using this copper nickel line, bends really nice, looks nice. I've had really good luck with it. So we got that one on there like that. This one goes around the diff. We even used this factory 
line clamp location. So that goes there, holds the line over the rear diff. Guys, look at that, that one just lines up. So we got there and then we'll put a bulkhead here, similar to this, and then we have a soft line that goes from here to rear end to allow them for the movement. That's really all there is to it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. That'll give you an idea of what we did here, but the rear conversion itself is, is really simple. And because of those machine brackets that we make, it makes things and, and all the little adapters and, and uh, hardware makes it pretty easy. So hope that helped out. We'll uh, show you when it's finished, what it all looks like but uh, get this couple things on there and call it good. Thanks for watching. See ya.